This is something we've had a lot of requests for underneath our Maintenance Monday videos, how to true a wheel. Well, luckily enough, here in the workshop, we've got a high-end wheel truing stand in which to do the job. You can get much cheaper ones, which are perfectly adequate if you're just doing this job occasionally at home. The advantage of a wheel truing stand is this point here. It allows you to very easily see and hear exactly where the rim is warped. You can do the same thing with a wheel inside the frame or forks using the brake pads, but of course, it's much harder to be accurate and it'll make the job overall a lot harder as well. Tools you're gonna need for the job apart from the stand, well, of course, you're going to need a spoke key. These comes in different sizes, so you'll need to make sure you've got the right one for the job. If you've got bladed or aero spokes, you might also need a tool in order to keep them in the right position. And finally, if you want to be extremely accurate, you could do with a wheel dishing tool, which I'll show you how to use now. What is the dish of a wheel, I hear you ask? Well, effectively, it's how central the rim is in comparison to the hub. And of course, it's very hard to do that by eye, which is where this tool comes in useful. Effectively, you just put the two ends of the tool against the rim itself and you wind this part in until it meets the part of the hub which meets the internal part of the fork or the frame on the bike. Once you've got that simply take it away, do the same on the other side. Now as you can see the dish of our rim is correct but if you find that your rim is one way or the other you'll need to pull it over before you start truing the wheel. To do this, you'll need to use your spoke key and tighten the spokes on the side of the wheel which you want to pull it over to. Start by the valve hole so that you know that you've gone all the way around. And using your spoke key, just do each spoke up half a turn, which means turning your spoke key anti-clockwise, and then recheck that it's in the center using your dishing tool. Before we begin with this process, it's a good idea to go around the spokes a little at a time, feeling them with your fingers to make sure there aren't any that are really overly loose. If there are, then tighten them up using your spoke key before you start truing your wheel. Now, one of the first things to remember is that to tighten a spoke, you need to turn this spoke key anti-clockwise. The second thing to remember is that as you tighten a spoke, it will pull the rim towards the side of the hub that the spoke is attached. And the other thing that will do, it will also pull the rim towards the hub from a radial point of view. Put the wheel into the truing stand. Spin it gently and find a point where the rim is touching one side of the dishing fingers or brake pad and then tighten a spoke which attaches to the hub on the opposite side. If you've got a wheel truing stand which allows you to see the radial true of the rim, i.e. the distance away from the hub, as well as the side to side true, then you can use the following method. If the rim pulls over to one side and it moves slightly away from the hub in terms of its radius, then tighten a spoke on the opposite side. If, however, the rim moves to one side but also moves closer to the hub, then loosen the spoke on the same side. Keep going around the rim until it no longer touches the dishing fingers, at which point you can wind these fingers in and start going around the rim again. You can spend as much or as little time as you want going around the wheel, but of course the longer you spend on it, the truer it will be and the longer it will remain in true. It's a good idea every so often to remove the wheel from the stand, place the hub on the floor and put your weight on opposite sides of the rim. Do this on both sides and make sure that everything is seated properly. If you don't do this, then you might well get your wheel very true when it's in the stand, but it may well quickly buckle again when you start riding it. Well, I've spent a fair amount of time on this now. I think this is about as good as I'm going to get it. It's accurate to within 0.1 of a millimetre from side to side, which despite the fact that the professional mechanics who've been helping me have scoffed at that, I think it's as good as I'm going to get it and it's perfectly adequate for me to ride. Stay tuned to GCN for more mechanical videos. But what can you expect to get from a basic service? Well, that very much depends on how much you're willing to pay, what type of bike you've got, and what type of riding you do. 